I have numerous choice words about this fucking racetrack. Honestly. It's... Monaco. Worst racetrack in the entire world. Honestly. Look how narrow it is. And look how big a Formula 1 car is. When this racetrack debuted in 1929, you know, the biggest r race car was back then was, uh, you know, it was fairly small. It was, what, a metre wide? A couple of metres long? It was really small, and the speeds it could reach? Pretty fast for this tiny little track. It worked back then, but the cars are now so much larger. They're what, four meters long? That's probably a rubbish estimate, but it's they're quite long, they're two meters wide, and they can go at speeds... Oh god, average race speeds are probably a lot higher. Probably are a lot higher. I don't know exactly how much faster the lap around Monaco is, but uh... Yeah, if you you can do a lap of Monaco these days in about one minute ten seconds, which is a damn sight faster than how it was back in 1929. They call this one of the most prestigious race victories in the world because it's so grueling. It's such a slog. Yeah, because you spend most of your time trying not to fucking crash and not actually racing. That's what it is most of the time. Nine times I can't crash. One time, let's go racing, boys. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Honestly, awful fucking track. Because of how small this track is, how large and fast a modern F1 car is, the racing around here is terrible. In 2018, Daniel Ricciardo had a, a, um, an engine issue, which meant he was slower than he should have been. And it looks like Sebastian Vettel could have overtaken him, but nope. Ricciardo managed to hold on to his race position onto first place because this track is too small to get an overtake in. The DRS zone on, uh, on the start-finish straight. It's just a formality. It's completely bloody useless. Completely useless. You, it's too small. You've got you're running too much downforce. Even if you're using rich mix and overtake, <laughs> you're not gonna really overtake there. You've got your best chances of overtaking are dive bombing into a couple of the chicanes and hoping you get lucky in the Lowe's hairpin which is the worst corner in Formula 1. There's a good reason why I hate this track. That hairpin is a very, very good reason to hate this track. It's so slow, and my controller doesn't like it. Even going full lock, I have to slow right down for it to really notice that I'm trying to turn. If you touch the curb, you, you sort of bottom out or something. You lose time. I always lose time in that hairpin. And of course, I keep hitting the freaking walls. This track does not belong on a modern Formula One calendar. Not anymore. 20 years ago? Maybe. Now? Nope. Just nope. Cars are too big, too fast. You can't do any proper overtaking here. Nine times out of ten, the the lead race leader, whoever gets pole position, they win. That's where the result is largely decided. Qualifying on Saturday. <laughs> yep. Top three or four racers who uh, on. Top three or four on the grid, more than likely 
that's where they'll finish. Sure, we might get a, an example of Daniel Ricardo in a 2016, where you're or Lewis Hamilton in 2015, you know, where a pit stop screws you over. But honestly, as I said, nine times out of ten, We're 20 it in the speed barely track, happens. Miles per hour. There's no real genuine overtaking done here. Even if you do try and overtake, it's really bloody difficult because the track is too small. So, you know. It's actually a very, very good thing that it's not on the 2020 calendar, for real. Because it's terrible, and honestly, we don't need it. I don't care if it's part of the Triple Crown. It's only part of the Triple Crown because people have to try and not crash. That, that's all the challenge there is. Trying not to crash whilst going really fast. I mean, sure, that's how all racing is, I suppose, but, uh, <laughs> this is Monaco. You could put your arm out the window and, at the side of the car, and you're touching the barrier. That's just how fucking narrow this track is. It's pointless, it's useless, it's terrible. I don't know, I can't remember the last time someone said, Oh, wow, the Monaco Grand Prix was a really good race. No one likes this race. It's boring. 1996, that was great. 1984, that was great. But the cars were different back then. It was a different circuit back then. When it's a wet race, yeah, it can be fantastic. But uh, when it's dry and everything goes to plan, nope. Worthless race. Useless race. Boring race. For every exciting race there is, there's two or three boring races. It's just such a slog to watch. I should get a, I should win the Triple Crown, one part of the Triple Crown, because I watched this race. <laughs> I've watched this race, what? Oh god, three or four years now? 2016? 17, 18, 19, yeah, that's four years worth of Monaco Grand Prix. I have four Monaco Grand Prix wins now because I I actually watched this race. And in all that, not a lot of it actually exciting moments. To be honest, perfectly honest. We're all ready for tomorrow's race, but before we begin, let's have a quick look at those who will be fronting the grid. Leclerc, Vettel and Valtteri Bottas. Well, that wraps up qualifying, but don't worry, we'll be back tomorrow as we head into the Grand Prix. Nelson Piquet once said that driving the circuit de Monaco was like riding a bicycle around your living room. And it's not hard to see what he means by that. There's no more prestigious a Grand Prix victory than Monaco, but also none so challenging. We already see the lowest average speeds of the season here at the circuit de Monaco, and they'll be even lower in the difficult conditions today. 19 corners make up this famous two mile track and with the rain, it'll be even harder than usual to get that critical heat into the tires. Don't be surprised if we see a safety car at some point during the Grand Prix. Joining me for the Grand Prix once again is Anthony Davidson. So let's briefly discuss Lewis Hamilton. Looks like they've got a tough race in store today as grid penalties from changing power unit components has forced them further down the field. But on the bright side, at least those fresh components can help them maintain the power they need to come through the pack. I expect to see them take a more aggressive approach today to make up for the compromised start. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole, and starting alongside in P2 is Sebastian Vettel. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Verstappen, McDonald, and Albon. 
Ricardo, Norris, Stroll, and Esteban Ocon, Sainz, Giovinazzi, Daniel Kvyat, and Perez, Hamilton, Gasly, Kimi Raikkonen, and George Russell, Magnussen, Latifi, Grosjean, and Giuliano Alesi. And now it's time to head down to the track. The boss wants another points finish this weekend. Let's give it everything. Jeff, I am the boss. You're fired. So, I already hate the Monaco Grand Prix, I already hate driving this this circuit, and it's made even worse by the fact that it's raining, and I put on a dry setup to try and get a good qualifying, and it worked! I'm up into 6th, but... Huh. It's wet Monaco.
looks like it's going to be getting much lighter over the next 10 to 15 minutes. There should be more grip, but don't expect a dry track. Take button more, it's time to utilize some of this energy. So, I'm only four laps into this race now, but uh, the pre predicted race time was an hour, and it's this is just a fucking nightmare, so I decided, fuck it. I'm, this is a mechanical failure, let's just pretend, okay? I had a turbocharger failure or something, it was already pretty poorly, so... Evidently, something is wrong with my turbocharger. I'm going to keep going and then I'm going to retire in the Nico Rosberg spot. Because I just can't bear this fucking race. I hate it. I put up this pole. And people want me to drive it. Drive. I hate this track. I hate it with a passion. And I'm never going to drive it again. I'll simulate it from now on. I hate it. The fact you want me to drive it. I, w I tried doing this for you, but I'm not going to bother anymore, right? I'm not going to fucking touch this track with a, with a ten-foot pole. I hate it. And I'm not about to become Benjamin Daly anytime soon. I'm not going to become some master of Monaco. That's never going to happen, not as long as I'm using a controller. So no, no. I'm going to retire, and my sick car decides that it's going to reverse out of the, retiring, the retirement spot and drive back to the pits or something, because clearly that's how it's supposed to happen. I think I was the only retirement from this race as well. Looking typical, huh? They've done it then, they've won here in Monaco with an emphatic performance and a victory they can be proud of for years to come. Anthony, tell me, what was it that helped them achieve this success? Well, they clearly have a car that comes alive in the kind of conditions we were dealing with today. It's a very balanced package in the wet, and what that means is that the drivers have... The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. Amazing performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. Claire, I often wonder about your sanity but I have to wonder, what the fuck are you talking about? I retired after four laps, and you have the audacity to call it a great performance? You must have been watching a completely different race, you stupid bitch.
The weather was miserable today, but do you feel this was an advantage for you? Gee, yeah, it was such a such an advantage. I mean, it made this track so much easier to drive that I already hate with a bloody passion. Clearly, it it was so much more of an advantage that I decided to retire after only four laps because I hate this track and the rain. Why do you think you weren't as quick as your teammate today? Because I retired. Maybe you should have watched the race. It looks like your rival bested you today, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. I'll have to make up for it later. It wasn't the cleanest race today, was it? It's Monaco. What the fuck do you expect? Great. Well, that's everything. Our new parts have been completed without issue. They'll be on the car next race weekend.